This is Kathy Reuter from Fledgling Writers Community. Today we're bringing you another episode of Fledgling Fast 15. However, this one's a little bit different. So far we've had our three speakers out of five that would have been at our Fledgling Full Nest on July 11th. This we year. still wanted to bring you a little bit about each one of those speakers, but one of the speakers was supposed to be me. It's a little hard to interview yourself. So I'm bringing back my friend, Joy Nelsonberg, and she is going to be the interviewee today. Well, today I have the awesome honor of playing the interviewer on Fletchling Fast 15. I'm so honored. I get to interview the great Kathy Ruder. And boy, does she look good. Do y'all see ya? That's her. Why don't you just say hello to the people today? Hi, how are you? <laughs> All right, as we get ready to open up, we want Miss Kathy, this great um, visionary of Fledgling Fast 15, to just allow us to get to know her. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Miss Kathy. Well, I am a, a wife and mom and a Christian murder mystery writer. And I'm the founder of Fledgling Writers Community and Clearly Creative. Um, they kind of go hand in hand. Um, Clearly Creative is also what I use for my writing, my, my own personal writing. Um, I'm a former development editor, a former reporter, and a former uh, newsletter editor for a larger school district. And that all was about 15 to 20 years altogether there. So that's so me. You you were designed to do what you're doing. It, it's, it's all come together and, and it's fun. But if the audience is like me, hold up. I get the journalism, I get the editing, I get all of this, but now you're murdering people. Mm. Murdering people on paper, one of my favorites. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing what you know now, what would you have wanted someone to tell you when you first started writing? Oh, I know that one right away. In my case, this is not always the case, but in my case, it's going to take a whole lot longer than you think it is. Mm. We've moved. I, I started writing my first book, which is in the editing stages right now, and it's called Mer And I started it about, let's see, eight, nine, 10 years ago, maybe 11. We have moved several times since then. We had a full year where my husband was in Texas before we were, and um, we had graduations, and we had college graduations, and we had family commitments, and yeah, um, in between all that, I wrote, and um, I did get involved with a group online called Ten Minute Novelists, and that was one of the best because it made me sit down, instead of these big, huge time blocks that I thought I had to have, Oh. I was working on, um, oh, let me remember her name, Catherine Grubbs, and um, Jessica White is, is her cohort, which happens to be a mutual friend of ours, and I learned through them that I could do it in little chunks of time, which is what I needed to, to learn, and so the book did get written, it, like I said, it's now in editing, but it, yeah, it took way longer than I thought it was going to, and I'm um, hoping that doesn't take takes so long for the second book. That was great. That was a great nugget. So I hope everybody really tuned into that golden nugget because expectations mean everything. The heartbreak is just not as hard if you know exactly what to look for. So what was your favorite piece of writerly advice that you ever received, remember, or remember hearing? I know one piece of advice that I keep trying to give out because it meant so much to me when I heard it, and it was at Breathe Writers Conference. I believe it was from Andy Rogers, and it was, it was him or one of the other guys that speaks there frequently. 
but I'm pretty sure it was him. And he was talking about social media and I was just getting going on social media at the time. And I was like, I gotta be in this and I gotta be in this and I gotta be in this. And he just told everybody in his room, just settle down. You don't have to be on everything at once. Try one, get comfortable with it, and then do the next one. And that really helped because it was like, okay, I don't have to be on this and this and this and this and not do any of it well. I got used to one and then the next one. And now I'm starting another little one. Also, what I add to that when I give that advice back out is they might, the, this, they meaning the social media parts, they might change to where it's not your favorite anymore. Um, there, there's a lot of changes going on right now and some of it's not real conducive for writers. Some of it's better than what it was. So it's okay if they change because you can change it. Um, so favorite resources. What would you say is your favorite resource to share with a writer or just writers in general? Okay. And I will tell you that Fledgling is, we are actually known for giving out all kinds of resources because our belief is if you don't know it, you can't share it. You can't, you can't use it. So we give out all kinds of resources. We ask for resources of our, of our guests. Uh, but m probably some of my absolute favorites, and I'm going to butcher their names, I know I am, <laughs> is Becca Puglisi and Angela Ackerman. They have the uh, yes. books. I actually said that word right. I always screw up thesaurus. <laughs> they have um, the emotional thesaurus, the emotional wound, the positive traits, the negative traits. Um, and then I think there's the urban settings and another settings and those are fantastic because i thought i was good with my descriptions and sometimes you get going and you find you're using the same word over and over and over yes um, source.com on the, on the web is always up on my computer when i'm writing but there's sometimes that just that that word you want is there and you can't think of it those those uh the source books by those two ladies are phenomenal to use and, and they give you even resources in behind it, words in behind it that you can trickle down through your writing to actually bring what you're trying to get out more concrete because you're using words that bounce off each other really well okay. instead of just using the same word over and over and over and it kind of gets boring. So that one, and also um, I love Stephen James' Story Trump Structure. That's the one I'm reading right now, actually. Awesome. I know we're not perfect. What What's that big mistake as a writer that you've made? Okay, so I'm gonna give you two. One is as a writer, and one is something that a lot of people who are close to me know that almost stopped me from doing this, the, the fledgling. So my writing is, uh, was losing some of my story. Uh, I, I lost one specific pivotal chapter because I am really mm -hmm. disorganized. <laughs> I mean, people that know me think I'm super, di super organized when it comes to doing projects and things, but really I'm an hot mess in behind it. Um, but I'm learning to be better. So that's, you know, I'm learning and people are seeing that learning. But I wasn't keeping my stuff together good and I lost this one pivotal chapter. I actually found it last week going through some files. Wow. And it should have stayed lost. <laughs> it should have stayed lost. <laughs> I realized that I have grown so much because it was it was a good oh my gosh probably within the year of first starting to write this book was this chapter Wow! and I, I realized it was nice to see the growth but I also know that if I hadn't lost it and spent a lot of time looking for it mm. maybe I could have gotten a little farther a little quicker 
So that's the writing part is I, I recommend making sure your stuff is, is um, organized. I'm, I'm learning Scrivener now. I, I'm going to try that because I was doing it on Word and yeah, pff, it's not my thing. I know some people write that way, but I'm, I'm going to try Scrivener this time and see how it goes with the second book. Um, but the thing that almost stopped me writing, speaking, starting fledgling, anything was because I let somebody, somebody else's, what they did that it, it, I used to own a bridal business and, okay. um, which is probably why my protagonist is in the bridal business because you know, I know <laughs> it. <laughs> um, and I was, uh, an MC for two back-to-back -back bridal um, shows and a lady that was supposed to write down all the descriptions of the dresses up there. I went to her that morning to get them and she said, oh, I didn't have time. So I was trying to explain the dresses across the stage from me and shaking in my boots and got off the stage and I said, I'll never do that again. I've never put myself in that thing in for 17 years I think I don't I didn't I didn't speak at all in, in public I finally figured out that I thought I'd forgiven her and I really had I had forgiven her but I realized I hadn't forgiven myself for mm -hmm. not being as organized as I normally was in business and not being there early enough to say okay well you didn't do what you had promise but I have time I can quick save myself and also I didn't go ask my friends who were there that could have helped I, I could have relied on them and I didn't let them know what was going on so I had to forgive myself for a lot of stuff and I think that's something that I hope we all remember is we can get through pretty much anything if you forgive yourself and you ask for help that's really hard to do is ask for help Thank you for being so transparent. I felt you when you shared that. I needed that even as a writer, you know, so great. Thank you so much. Best thing that ever happened to you as a writer? Uh, hands down, it's meeting some people that I fangirl over. <laughs> I fangirl a lot, but I, but I used to do the whole, oh, they're not going to want to talk to me. I'm some little, you know, reader. And I um, I had two different ones. I briefly told you about the one of meeting Felix Francis last year at BoucherCon, but the best one I think was meeting Stephen James at Breathe Writers Conference because it was a really, it was a bad day, not for the conference. I was having a great conference, but I was having a really bad day in my self-esteem and, and things were changing so much in my life. And it was just like, everything's out of control. And so I felt out of control. And I had not asked ever that I can remember an author for a picture with them. I've asked to take a picture of them, but I've never asked to take a picture with them. And I don't know what it was other than just, you know, that little tap on the shoulder, hey, you need this. And I asked him, <laughs> can I get a picture with you? Oh yeah, sure, he's so gracious. And he stood up, and he stood up, and he stood up. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's really tall, and I'm really not. So um, just that picture, it's not real clear, but it, it means the world to me because it was, I didn't realize it then, but I realized it later that that was like a turning point for me of, of my confidence was starting to return a little bit. This has been so awesome. It's been informative. Uh, it's touched my heart. It's even inspired me. And I'm sitting up here, you know, trying to interview you. Uh, so what would be your wrap up? What's that last thing that you would like to say to the writers out there listening to you today? I would like to make sure everybody knows that you need to pour in to yourself so that you can pour out to your readers. You can't keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out if you don't pour in. That pour in could look like 
um, going to a conference for writers. It could look like reading a book just for the pleasure of reading a book, not, not tearing it apart. I mean, yeah, you can do that later, but that first time through, just enjoy it. It could look like, well, I probably still have some paint on me from this morning because we, I was out and I love being outdoors. I love doing artsy crafty stuff around the house. Those are pouring in things for me. And anything that you feel pours into you, gives you some rest from writing, do that. So that you can pour back out once you come back to that writing. And it's okay to have little spots of time not to be writing. Life happens, schedules happen. We'll get there. Could be 10 years later. I'm just curious. I've heard you mention your boys. I know of Andreas. What do you, what do you think that they, how do you think they see you as a writer? Do they make little comments? I'm just, I'm just curious. Um, none of my guys are really writers. They all, uh, I say my guys, it's all three of them support me. Um, maybe not in the way of some people who, you know, their spouses or their best friends or whatever, read everything. Um, I don't know if any of them will ever read my stuff because murder mysteries aren't their things. But if I need, I mean, there's book, there's bits and pieces in my books that are them because I've gone to them. I don't know how to do this or I, I need this reference and they'll look it up or they'll go get something or they'll get some piece of equipment that I need and, and it's a gift from for birthday or something. So that's their way of supporting is things I need and time I need. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see if they actually read the books though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had to throw that in there. I love family, I love family. But this has been awesome today. I don't envy your job. You have a mountain of a job as the interviewer but you made it so much fun. I'm just glad that I had the honor to just go through an interview and get and help other writers learn more about you. I appreciate you being here and, and helping out because it is a little hard to interview yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a little odd. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in today and, and being the interviewer so I could be the interviewee.